Okay, sorry. Uh, and it's, is it? Okay. I mean, the real stuff is just going to start now, so don't worry. <laughs> you didn't miss anything. <laughs> and then uh, it, re it really works just as polling uh, really does. So at any time during the peer connection, you can ask Janus for information. It will return a snapshot of whatever is happening in there, so how many packets were sent, what's the, what's the current state of ICE, DTLS, all those kind of things. And if you are familiar enough with all of the, all those things, you can have a look at those snapshots, maybe one or, one or more snapshots in time to figure out what's going wrong. Which, of course, is far from the ideal solution. I mean, this is just a quick view of how this information is returned. So it's, it's split in different parts so that you can actually study different bases of, the, of what's happening. What would, would be more interesting is a kind of an asynchronous approach. So something where you actually, Janus notifies you in real time about whatever is happening, either within the core or within different plugins, which is actually what we started uh, working on some time ago. We, and we call them event tenders. So, Basically, all the core plugins can generate events, and there is an internal mechanism within Janus that then broadcasts these events to different new plugins within Janus that can then handle these events in different ways. <laughs> and so, as we'll see later, you can use these plugins for different things. So, one plugin may save to a database, or other plugins you may use for different things, and so on. The idea is that uh, it's not the event handlers per se that provide the troubleshooting. They just provide you with the means to actually either integrate with existing platforms or do the stuff yourself in order to do something more creative. And I'll also talk a bit about the, uh, a sample event handler that we implemented in the meanwhile. And so the idea is that internally it pretty much works this way. So Janus generates an event. There is an event manager within Janus that relays these events to all the plugins that are registered within Janus to receive these events, and then each event can do whatever it needs to do with these events. So one may just format the event to JSON and send it via HTTP to something else for processing, or it may save to database, or it may populate a CDR of some sort or whatever you need it to do. I mean, it really is up to what you implement in your own plugin there. And there are different types of events that you can generate and subscribe to, really much, pretty much depending on what you want to troubleshoot. So if it's just session-related stuff, or if it's anything related to the WebRTC setup, or uh, statistics in real time, and things like this, we'll, sh we'll see a brief example of this in a minute. And the idea is, of course, that each of those events, which of course pre presents you a partial view of what is happening, can then be used together with other events in order to correlate and have a, a better picture of whatever is happening also, let's say, within the context of a conference rather than a single peer connection, just to make a single example. 
And uh, to make this um, easier also to integrate with other platforms, we started writing a single event handler for the moment, which is the only event handler that is currently available. Hopefully this will change in the future. And this event handler does nothing more than uh, getting an event that Janus originates, format it to JSON, and then shoot it out via HTTP to an external backend so that in this external backend you can do some fancy stuff with it. And so. It does. It is a bit much smarter than that. So we can aggregate events so that you do not shoot a single a single message per event and something like this. Some basic retransmission mechanisms or authentication and so on. But really, it's nothing more than that in principle. It's really just a way to take this event, shoot it somewhere else, so that you can play with them in a in a nice way, which I, I will also try to describe a bit in some in some examples and blog posts. And. Uh, if we refer to the previous image where I mentioned an admin application that was polling for information, in this case, the admin application is notified in real time whatever happens. So anytime a session is created, the admin is aware of that. Anytime uh, something happens where RTC-wise, it is, it is also being notified. It is notified about any offer that happens, anytime the ice state changes and things like this. So that you are immediately aware of whatever is happening within the platform. We should make, make it easier to build monitoring and troubleshooting things on top of that. And the nice thing about this first interaction is something that is actually related to the presentation you'll see, we'll see later on. Uh, in fact, Lorenzo is going to, to talk a bit about how they use these events to, within the Homer framework in order to monitor a Janus framework, which was really exciting and interesting for me. And I won't delve too much on this in this slide, but uh, I just wanted to say that I'm really excited about this for several reasons. Most of all because Janus and Homer are both figures from mythology, which is something that I really like about. But most importantly, uh, I'm, uh, I'm from Mythico, or Miteco, how people call it. And we, we call it Mythico, which means awesome uh, in English. We, we called it like that also because it's what Homer Simpson says in the Italian version of The Simpson anytime something exciting happens. So it's really like a match made in heaven for us. So, and you can, there's a YouTube video over there that, that shows it. So just to show this a bit more in practice, I didn't really make some demos uh, up and running, but I did make some dumps in order to, uh, to show you how this all works. Uh, at least from, um, from an events perspective, and I studied a couple of different demos within Janus. So we have different demos to showcase different plugins, and this one shows my ugly face trying an echo test demo. So whatever I send to Janus be, is being sent back to me. So we create a single peer connection that we can monitor, and so I, I captured some dumps of the event handler uh, mechanism in order to see what, the, what Janus is actually telling me about whatever happens. And it is also uh, summarized in a blog post that I wrote some time ago that shows how I actually wrote a simple Node.js application that gets all uh, the events from the sample ender plugin as a JSON object and then saves these events to a database formatted somehow so that I can then make some processing over the database or the tables to see if I can get some information about what happened during a specific session. And so if we look at the events that are formatted as JSON, as I sent, we, we get a lot of events uh, about anything that happens. In this case, we see a session has been created using the HTTP transport in particular. We see a handle has been attached to the echo test plugin. And there is also this piece of information that is actually very important for correlation. And I'll show this in the next demo that I'll show bef uh, after. After we created a, a handle that is a basically an abstraction of a connection between a user and the plugin, we can create a peer connection over it, which is exactly what happens in this other event. So we get an event saying that the remote peer is starting sending us an, an SDP, an offer to basically create a peer connection. This gets passed to the, uh, to the echo test plugin and the echo test plugin sends back an answer to, to establish the, the communication, which is exemplified in this other event that we get here. So we get, we, the owner is local because it's basically the, uh, the SDP that John has generated for itself. In this case, it's an answer. So as soon as the offer and answer has, have been exchanged, the actual uh, peer connection setup starts, which means that we start getting events about the ICE state machine, so whatever, happening within, whatever starts happening within ICE. In this case, for instance, we might get events related to ICE that is in a connecting phase, so the ICE connectivity checks start uh, taking place. After this, eventually, uh, the, the connection succeeds from an ICE perspective. And we are also notified about the selected pair that has been chosen for that specific peer connection, which may be important for several different reasons. Once size has been done, we come up to the DTLS information. So after ICE is done, we still need to do a DTLS handshake to exchange the SRTP keys. 
And so even in this case, we see that DTLS is still trying and that gets to a connected phase. If this doesn't happen, we know that there is something wrong, for instance, in the DTLS send chick, and so it gives us some ideas about why something is wrong in the connection setup and so on. Once this is being done, uh, media starts being exchanged, and so we get events on that as well. So first of all, we are told that the peer connection is up from the, from the Janus perspective. We get information about audio and video that are, that are being received by Janus, which is also important because it means that Janus is getting now media from the user and so can start using it. And we also get live statistics about uh, each second or so for each peer connection so that you can, for instance, uh, see uh, live statistics that, that tell you about the packets being exchanged and things like this and so may be useful for several different reasons and this happens for both audio and video. So uh, all kind of information that as you can imagine are really important for understanding whether or not the peer connection is actually doing its job or not. And more importantly, this is also important for the next demo, we also get events from plugins themselves. And considering that plugins may be written by third-party implementers, by whoever, they are very much plugin-specific, as you can imagine. So we just provide a framework for allowing plugins to notify you about anything that happens within a plugin. In this case, the echo test user was just adjusting the bitrate settings to force a different bitrate uh, for the communication, so nothing really important. So, if we want to look instead at a more complex application, like a media conferencing application maybe, and here I am talking with myself because I don't have any friends. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. I, uh, this is also uh, explained in another blog, blog post where I tried to explain a bit how things work. In this case, we were more interested in knowing whether or not we can figure out the relationship between uh, peer connections belonging to different users. First of all, if we, want, if we are able to associate peer connections belonging to the same users to a specific user, and if we, are, if we are able to reconstruct the topology of a video room, so who is subscribed to who, who is publishing, and things like this, which is basically what the next dump try to provide. So I will not go through the same uh, session or the WebRTC event. We assume that everything is fine in that sense. We focus instead on the plugins generated by the Video Room plugin, which give us some context about what the Video Room does with the subscriptions in principle. So in this case, we see that this session handle combination uh, has a participant joined. In, in this case, it's called Chicho. Chicho is, Chicho is one of the users I, use, I always use in, in my demos. He has a specific ID in the room, 1234, so I know that it is, uh, this handle is being used to publish the contribution by Chicho in the room. At the same time, people instead is using those session and handle co uh, combination to, to publish his own contribution in the room. And then we see different events related to subscriptions. Instead, we see another handle being used to subscribe. In this case, this is subscribed to feed 83 something that is that is basically the, uh, the ID that Chicho had. And then we see another subscription instead for the feed 52 something. So we, we know that somebody has subscribed to people's feed instead. So intuitively we know that they are both publishing and they are, they are subscribed to each other, but it is not to be given for granted because you can actually use this plugin for, for um, things that are much more complex than that. And so we want to be sure of this. What we can do is basically looking at the events that, that are, were associated to the, to the handle creation, and we see that these two different handles over here have the same OPAC identifier, and so have these other two, two and these other two, which means that they both were originated by the same user, basically. So we know that those handles may, may, were created by the same user. And looking at the session handle identifier and things like this, we can basically reconstruct the topology, which is that people is using a specific handle to publish. He's subscribed to a specific ID via, via a different handle and so on. We know which handle belongs to whom. We can figure out that the, they are basically subscribed to each other, which is what we wanted to figure out. And this is basically how you can correlate information related to different plugins with each other, which is, uh, which is kind of cool. And just to conclude, basically, because I, I managed somehow to, to, to talk about 95 slides in 15 minutes, so I, I deserve a prize for, for this. This is really something really new that, uh, that we've been experimenting with, and the idea is that in the future, uh, more and more plugins will come to basically handle these events in more creative ways. Uh, in the next presentation, Lorenzo will show us how they actually handle this to integrate this within the Homer framework. And, it would be really, really nice to have actually a native plugin that acts as an event handler within Janus itself rather than relaying on a plugin that shoots event, an event to a Node.js application which then introduces the event in Janus, which would be quite, of cool, quite cool. 
we will also have a student working on the, this kind of uh, interaction in the future, which is kind of nice. But more importantly, I mean, help us play with this. If you're interested in this, just start using it. Let us know if, if there is anything more that is needed on this or if you think uh, it's actually just nice as it is. And this is all I've got. So I'm open to questions if there is any time for that. We have like one minute and a half. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Thank you, by the way. Mm -hmm. Thank you.